only thing uh, that you should know about me, I think, or the only two things, is that I have been in higher education for nearly half a century, teaching at Queens College and then Boston University, and a couple other places for just one year stints. And the other thing is that uh, you should know is that in politics, I am a uh, Roosevelt Democrat, which means I'm way to the left of the current Democratic Party. And in cultural matters, I'm a Louis XIV royalist, <laughs> as you're about to hear. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention three facts. Uh, the first one is that um, the kids in college now know nothing. And I discovered this uh, a couple of years ago, two or three years ago, I, uh, uh, when I mentioned Joseph Haydn, and I got completely blank stares. And not a single person in my undergraduate or graduate class had ever heard of that great composer. And then the next year, Ingmar Bergman's name came up, and not a single one of my students in the undergraduate had ever heard of Ingmar Bergman. He's only been dead four or five years. And in the graduate class, uh, one woman of a certain age <laughs> knew who he was. And it's all the more shocking because these people secretly want to be screenwriters. They're in my creative writing class, but their dream of dreams is to be a... Uh, and that's when I, and then it doesn't end there, believe me. I mean, try Bach sometimes. Uh, they just don't know. So that's fact number one. Fact number two is that, uh, again, a couple of years ago, there was a highly regarded, well done study at the University of Michigan, which pretty much proved, and certainly argues, that the students in universities now have 40% less empathy toward others than the students of the 80s or even the 90s. It's just me, me, me. And the third fact, not unrelated in my view, is that 58% of the male students at Harvard go into what? Wall Street, yeah, high finance, 58%. And that also is of about two, two or three years ago. Now, instead of being ashamed of this and hanging their heads and wailing, Harvard is proud of it. Because, of course, they get a return on those students. If Harvard were really smart, in fact, it's my plan for all universities, you don't charge any tuition, but you tithe. So 10 years, 15 years later, uh, Mitt Romney can give it to his church, but the Harvard uh, financiers can give it back to Harvard. They'll do much better than with the tuition. It's not just Harvard, of course. It's everywhere. I gave a talk. It was supposed to be a 20-minute talk to the BU honor students, the best kids at BU. And uh, it went on for two hours. And they had utter scorn for the kinds of things I'm, gonna, I'm saying now. And uh, it, be it quickly became clear to me that these students at BU, the creme de la creme at BU, and believe me, that's pretty good creme, they were not interested in knowledge. They were interested in training. They were not interested in ideas. They were interested in skills. Uh, in other words, they wanted to go, just like the Harvard kids, to a vocational school. And unfortunately, universities across America are giving them what they want. So instead of a real education, which in my book means this, uh, you learn about the best that human beings uh, have created, the best and most profound things they have thought, and the most daring things that they have done. There's almost none of that now uh, in the universities. Even at a great school like Columbia, where they have, uh, and, if you, and if you want to send your kids somewhere, uh, my advice is to send them to St. John's or Columbia or something where there's still some holding on to this. But even there, the famous two-year curriculum in, the, in Western culture is shaved down, shaved down, shaved down. Why Western culture? Well, well, the answer is until you know your own culture, you can't understand any other but they don't know that uh, anymore. 
this um, thing that's happening in education has consequences. This ignorance, this lack of empathy, and the fact that uh, Harvard is turning out these cold-hearted Republicans. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> these things are not only related, they have a cause. And the cause is that the absence of beauty in one's life has consequences. And the consequences are a coarsening of one's own sensibility, a shrinking of the imagination, and a sense of what's possible in the world. And finally, a dissociation from the best of what men and women have created and thought about and done in the past. We are simply let loose. Uh, the people at BU were not happy when I, when I mentioned some of these things. Some of you may not be happy now, but I mean, uh, you can take it from a guy who's taught for 50 years and has seen the decline going on, that it is happening, and it's, a, I think, a desperate situation. I have another minute or two, so I'm going to end up uh, saying, what, what can one do about it? Well, lots of things, I suppose, but what we can individually do is start reading some good books. And you can read, uh, on my recommendation, the five greatest novels ever written. And they are, number one, I think, is Don Quixote. All the other novels, in a sense, spring from it. Number two, this is a matter of taste, I think, between two and three, but I'll go with Brothers Karamazov. Uh, the rule is one can only have one book per writer, otherwise it's all Russian novels. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I think Brothers Karamazov for the depth of its feeling and its humanity. Number three then becomes uh, War and Peace. But if you prefer, you can, uh, Nabokov would have reversed those, or he wouldn't even have Dostoevsky at all. Number four is Proust, In Search of Lost Time, or the beautiful title that Scott Moncrief gave it, In Search of uh, uh, Remembrance of Things Past. And number five is a three-way tie. <laughs> <laughs> between uh, Middlemarch, which I think is the greatest novel in our language, uh, Ulysses, because one has to say Ulysses, and I, I think it deserves it, and the third is uh, Magic Mountain by Thomas Mann. So as I tell my students, I'll tell you, get reading. Thank you very much.